The Xenoblade series is a well-crafted and in-depth JRPG saga spanning over 10 years with four games. Each game contains a unique and interesting world, memorable characters, engaging gameplay, and a well-written story. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is no exception. In fact, it takes every aspect that makes the series great and takes it farther. The main cast of characters is very memorable, the story is darker and more interesting, and the gameplay takes the best aspects of the gameplay of 1 and 2 while adding new mechanics. Overall, this game is not only one of my favorite RPGs of all time, but one of my favorite games in general. So without further ado, let's dive into the world of Aeonios. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is a direct sequel to both 1 and 2, meaning the gameplay is directly based on both games and chronologically takes place after both games. In fact, the world itself is a mixture of the world from the previous two games, since there are many visual references seen throughout the worlds that you travel through. All of the different areas are huge, and it's fun to explore the various regions of the game. The gameplay is also kind of a mixture of 1 and 2 as well, since the different combat styles are similar to each game, with the Kevis classes being similar to 1's combat, and the Agnes classes being similar to 2's. One of the new features in this game is the class system, where you can change the class of each party member. Classes are essentially different roles that can be gained through other party members or heroes that join you. The Ouroboros system is also a nice addition, both story-wise and gameplay-wise, since it adds a nice change of pace during battles, it signifies the connection between Kevis and Agnes party members. Most aspects of this game feel like the perfect combinations between the aspects of Xenoblade 1 and 2 while properly concluding this trilogy. As I mentioned previously, the battle system is basically a mixture of 1 and 2, as there are classes that function similarly to each game. In this game, I feel like the battle system was just as easy to learn as the battle system in 1, but it does become more complex and harder to master over time. After playing the previous two games, I already know the basics of the Xenoblade combat formula, but this game does explain that in the tutorials anyway, so it's fairly approachable to beginners. The fact that you can change classes definitely puts more variety into the mix, since you can change your party to fit your playstyle. Throughout my playthrough, I've mixed up their classes a few different times, and max ranked a few different classes with each main party member. As I played through the game, I also unlocked various heroes throughout different side quests as well as the main story. While the heroes are great additions to the story and world building of the game, they definitely add more depth to the gameplay. The heroes basically act as a 7th party member, and you could also obtain their class to use with your main party members. On top of the classes and heroes, there are also Master and Fusion Arts that you can obtain. The Master Arts are basically extra arts that you can use that originate from different classes. Fusion Arts combine the normal arts and the Master Arts to create more effective arts and can increase your Ouroboros level, but it takes longer due to having to wait for both cooldowns for the arts. The Ouroboros forms are also an interesting mechanic as well, since it combines two party members and allows you to use more powerful arts. There are also skill trees that can enhance various stats of the Ouroboros form. Chain attacks also utilize this form, and they can end chain attacks with a more powerful attack. Chain attacks in general were very useful in this game, since you gain an EXP bonus if you defeat the enemy or boss during the chain attack. The combat in Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is overall very engaging and was definitely fun to learn and master throughout my playthrough. Outside of the combat, the worlds in Xenoblade Chronicles 3 are absolutely beautiful and are very fun to explore. While it doesn't have the completely seamless and open world of Xenoblade X and Breath of the Wild, the worlds are still massive. Sometimes, I couldn't even tell where one region started, as there are whole chapters that take place within a single area. While this game isn't completely connected, it almost gives the impression of being an open world game, as the areas are so large and it takes a while to explore. It's fun to go off the path for the main quest, 
and to just explore the different areas and do the various side quests. I really enjoy the unique environments of this game, from the deserts, open fields, caverns, floating islands, and the sea. Each area really feels distinct, as there are many landmarks and different monsters littered throughout the regions. There are also other colonies that you can visit, and they mainly serve as areas where you can do hero quests, along with other side quests. It's also unique to see some of the colonies with how they adapt to their environments by being structured differently. This game also looks great graphically, and is honestly one of the best looking games on the Nintendo Switch. This game doesn't really have that blurry effect that Xenoblade Chronicles 2 had, and the image actually looks clear and sharp. The textures in the worlds all look very detailed, and it just looks better overall. Even in handheld mode, the game still looks and performs very well, which is actually kind of impressive when comparing it to the other entries on the Switch. Overall, the worlds are very interesting and detailed, and this game is graphically one of the best looking games on the Switch. While the gameplay and visuals of Xenoblade Chronicles 3 are excellent, the story is mind-blowingly great. In general, the story is much darker this time around, as there are two nations, Tevez and Agnes, that are basically fighting in an endless war. Each soldier only lives 10 years, and most people die on the battlefield. The main character, Noah, is an offseer and mourns the fallen soldiers as he sends them off by playing a tune on his flute. It later turns out, that Noah's group from Kevez and another group of three from Agnes have to join forces to stop the true threat, Morbius. I mean Mobius. Kind of funny how they chose that name considering the meme happened only a couple months ago. It's Mobin time. Along with the dark yet intriguing story, the characters in general are also very enjoyable. Noah, Yuni, Lance, Mio, Tyon, and Senna are great characters, and I love their dynamic and how they develop throughout the course of this game. They go from sworn enemies to some of the closest friends, and that development is really entertaining to see. Noah and Mio's growing relationship specifically is heartwarming, and I love their interactions throughout the game. The other characters that you'll meet throughout the story are also interesting as well, they add a lot to the plot and world building. There's Ethel, who was a once revered leader who had her colony demoted, and Valdi, who is a young commander and a mechanic at his colony. The story of Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is one of my favorite stories in a video game, and the characters are also very enjoyable. Overall, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is one of my favorite games of all time. I love almost every aspect of this game, from the world, to the combat, to the interesting story and lovable characters. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is an excellent conclusion to the main Xenoblade trilogy. If you like RPGs, or a large-scale story-driven game, I definitely recommend Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Even if you haven't played the other entries in the series, I still recommend this one, as it takes the best elements from the previous games and expands upon them. So anyways, thank you guys for watching this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more, and make sure to check out my Discord server and Twitter if you want to. Goodbye.